What's up, everyone? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and uh, I'm here with Anna Vaisville, and we're going to go over um, the latest short report from White Diamond Research on FCUV, which is Focus Universal, as listed on the NASDAQ. Um, Anna, a little background on Anna. Anna is an independent equities analyst. Uh, I got in contact with Anna through Twitter. Her handle, I have it over here, but it's a value research, uh, and she posts a lot of, you know, she's just a, an a, uh, an actual analyst that can go over the report, uh, you know, and give a from a professional's point of view. Um, FCUV is an OTC uplist stock with a with a lot of a uh, with with a uh, paid research reports that uh, Anna is going to go over, as well as the report from um, White Diamond. So yeah, Anna, um, how are you? Hi, hi, David. What's hey. Going on? Are you okay? Cool. So, how did you? How, okay, so you want to tell us a little background about how you found out about FCUV, and uh, yeah, all the background. FCUV got my attention last year around November, because what I know is that it's an app list from OTC, and it paid to promote itself. And I thought, well, and the market cap at that point was around four hundred fifty million, and I noticed that they have, they really have no re- revenue. And it just didn't look right. What are the what are the main points of the short thesis? And uh, yeah, what like what were the, were the red flags that got you to focus on it more? Well, as the, the white diamond research, they they did an amazing job, and uh, in, um, they went farther than I did because I didn't I, I didn't look at it that deeply. And um, but what. This company is, it's a pretty much a quantitational uh, story stock because their whole story, and the reason that they got uplisted was because their story is about the internet of things. And in reality, uh, their hydroponics reseller that sells light meters and air filters, plus they have a home theater business uh, that they acquired uh, a while ago to a reverse merger. And if you look at their financials, they really don't generate any revenue. They generated 1.5 revenue last year uh, while burning 3 million uh, doing it. So they burn more cash than they actually generate. They develop, the, the, de- developing such technology as internet, which is very complicated and uh, many people are trying to uh, penetrate the market. They only spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars on research and development. So one should ask themselves how 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 is this that they're going to be developing something better than anybody else have with such an expense on R and D? And they have only thirteen people, I believe, thirteen people uh, that are working for the company full time and four independent contractors. Wow. <laughs> so. And the other thing that actually got my attention as well is that they filed the one, uh, 100 million shelf in October and it became effective. And it makes sense because according to their, to, to their 10K, they need to raise 20 million to keep developing their, uh, their technology. So the company is pretty much ready to raise cash and they have to. If they're not going to do it this year, they won't have to do it next year because they're going to run out of cash eventually. And uh, their legacy business obviously is not generating enough revenues uh, to cover their their, opera- their uh, operating expenses and other expenses. So they're losing money consistently. They want second, why would a company that's developing in such a disruptive technology is not investing in that technology but wants to keep acquiring company. Is that a possible roll up sometime? Uh, or is, is that the plan to just acquiring companies and build up revenues on that? It's quite, it's quite possible because if you look at, at how um, aggressive they are in telling this story, uh, it, it might be, it's a potential roll up. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Especially if the company is focusing on on, on 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 mergers and acquisitions more than anything. Gotcha. And what about the the, 
the reports, the research reports that came out in the company. Yeah, but that's the the the, 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 uh, the, the, the aggressive stories that they're telling is going to the paid promo, and one of them I um, I noticed when I first found the company. The, the they started promoting paid promotions in 2018. Uh, right at the same time when they hired Michael Pope. Michael Pope is the CEO and chairman of Boxlight Corp, BOXL. BOXL is a, is a known pump, pump and dump. At the same time that they hired Michael Pope, they were uh, promoting box, Boxel. And, um, and they hired, what's interesting is that they, they hired the same promoter for both companies, which was what why the Diamond Equity Research. So, uh, for example, XUV paid $19,500 to uh, promote their stock to Diamond Equity Research. It's, it's the same shop that Michael Pope used for Boxo. Mm -hmm. And the other promotion, which is very curious, is was on Benzinga. So a paid article after paid article and using yeah. from Michael Pork, Michael Pope's playbook from Boxel. Yes. Michael, Michael Pope was now um, working for FCUV. Wow. Okay. And they, 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 they were using the same promoter right? yeah. um, for, for both companies. Yeah. And I think that the most absurd promotion uh, came out the one that I noticed in uh, last year in November, and uh, the report that they just issued today was is by Argus Research, and Argus Research actually made a pr uh, issued a price target on FCUV of fifteen dollars last year in November, and they based it on. Revenue projection. They project. They, they project. They projected two million in revenues for 2021, which FCUB missed because they only made 1.5. 45 million 2022 and 150 million 2023. Today they updated that report and issued a price target of 16 dollars, but they decreased the revenues. To 10 million in 2022, 75 in 2023. So you have to think about how is this company that only generated 1.7 million in revenue ever from their legacy business, and they don't have even a prototype of any of the technology that they're promoting in all of those promotions, are going to generate 10 million in revenue this year and 75 next year. And why would you decrease the revenue and increase the price target? It makes no sense. Wow. But since they're getting paid between $22,000, $35,000 to talk about it, I guess they can get away with it. But uh, it's, it's, it's a paid promotion, basically. It's a paid promotion, but yeah. Yeah, it, it just it defines all logic. How is this possible? Gotcha. Um, and okay, the mastermind behind Boxel. So this is a, the same, the playbook of Boxel. Boxel was like, I remember in 2020, it was uh, going up on the on the whole coronavirus stuff about, edu it was like an educational company, but it's a, it was a pump and dump. <laughs> and it's like on its way out now. But, um, but yeah, so the, Michael Pope is an executive from Boxel and he works now for, FCUV? No, the, no, he's a, he's a board member. He's the board member. Okay. He's an executive of Boxel. And he most likely is the, the mastermind of this because Boxel had the same characteristics and the same paid promotion with the reports. Yeah, I mean, they use the same shop. The same shop and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay, and the conflict of interest. You want to go over that? You mentioned to me off the off the podcast about the conflict of interest, which I found really interesting. So, you want to go over that? Yeah. So, on top of the fact that they 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 tell a story that doesn't exist, and they keep paying to promote this that story, the CEO has major conflict of interest. 
because um, he used to be a sole owner of a company called Wider Shower. And Wider Shower is the only show, shareholder of Teen Gin, which who is a main supplier for AFCUV. For, and he cleverly, I guess, stepped stepped away as the only owner of Vita Shower, but he transferred that company to his wife. So in other words, what he's doing, he is paying his wife to get the product, and then he takes the product and sells it to Hydro Farm to FCUV. So he's double dipping. Anytime you have something like that, it's a major red flag because uh, the CEO shouldn't be involved in the, in uh, as a related party to a supplier that because they they won't they won't negotiate the best deals. And the fact that he gets paid from both sides is just a major conflict of interest for especially for a company that's on Nasdaq. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds like almost borderline illegal or you know something that he can get away with when the company was an OTC or a pink sheet mm -hmm. but now it's on the Nasdaq like uh so okay so to go over that all right so he used to be the sole owner of Vita Shower he yeah. transferred it to his wife and Vita Shower subsidiary is the supplier for SUV Currently, yeah, it's, it's the only supplier for the only supplier. So right now, the only supplier of FCUV is owned by Vita Shower, which his wife is, is a, basically the owner, and mm -hmm. it was transferred to her from him. So it's all this trail, this dirty trail, <laughs> um, that you know it's it's a clear conflict of interest. You know, this is not an OTC company anymore. This is not a pink sheet. This is not a gray sheet. This is a NASDAQ listed company. Um, so yeah, just major red flag there. Start to wrap it up. All right, so let's get this straight. So the C, so FCUV, um, it's a, the OTC up list. It's listed on NASDAQ. It had those two paid research reports. Uh, no, three. Three paid research, research no, it's reports. It's actually four by now. If we count two Argus up the reports and Benzema. Wow. And so, okay, so, and then they're claiming to have this revolutionary technology of the Internet of Things and the mergers and acquisitions, and they're making 1.5 million and they're missing their targets, but yet the, the paid research promotion keeps bumping up their stock price targets and future revenues or whatever. And, um, and then you have Michael Pope, the, the box hole pump and dump specialist running his old playbook with this company and then you have the ceo former owner of vita shower which is the owner of the supplier of fcuv and hit and the ceo's wife owns that so there's so many things wrong over here it's just ridiculous yeah okay great so um the whole research report on on a uh, white diamond um it should be out by now with this you know when this video comes out and you can get in contact with Anna. Anna's an independent equities analyst, and she's on Twitter, and you can get in contact with her. She's very good to collaborate with and very friendly and, and, and cool, as you can see. So with that, Anna, thank you very much for breaking that, breaking that all down to us. You know, So it's, very, it's always cool to get a, a professional's point of view. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, Anna. Well, I'll see you later. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for tuning into the Friendly Bear podcast. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So I wanted to add also on top of that, what we just covered in FCUV um, is the Argus research. So Argus research, as a lot of people know, I am the guy that went to FLGC, Flora Growth Cannabis Cultivation, Cultivation Facility in Bucaramanga, Colombia uh, last year. I think it was around September. But Argus research put out a report, uh, a research of report, which was a paid pump on FLGC when it was around two dollars, and they they put you know they put it around four dollars for a seven fifty price target, then it pumped. I went to Colombia, 
uh, I saw what was going on there. They have no infrastructure to deliver all their marijuana, whatever. All that is covered in depth. I, it was all exposed. I had a, you know, a confrontation with one of the directors there uh, in person. It's all on camera. You can go see it for yourself. It's one of my first. It's one of the first videos of the of the YouTube channel and the podcast because uh, it was it was good material. Um, but yeah, Argus was behind that, and so Argus has has. It's it's a pump service, and uh, so this is this whole FCUV is is like you know these pump and dumps keep coming back in other forms. So also we mentioned Anna and I mentioned the wife of the CEO, an FCUV owning uh, Vita Shower, and that's similar also with FLGC Stan Barty one of them nefarious characters of flgc behind the whole scheme uh that that has a history of doing this kind of that kind of stuff his wife was also a major share owner of flgc and just under the reporting requirements so like you know they 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 like to use their their spouses uh for these these kind of pump and dumps it's just a, a, so fcuv has very similar qualities to FLGC, which is incredible, and we all know where FLGC is right now. It, it's uh, it's around two dollars on its way out. If you look at the chart, pull up the chart of F, FLGC. Yeah, uh, it's, it's 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 a hell of a chart. But um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, how the relationship between these pump and dumps, how we see these things over and over again. As I was the lead investigator in FLGC, I was the one that went over there. There must be about 20 videos on FLGC that you can check out for yourself. Well, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening to the Friendly Bear Podcast.